Hey, I'm Charles Chutabala, and you're watching Slasher Pepper. Subscribe. Enjoy. <laughs> hey guys, Slasher Pepper, and welcome to another interview. This time it's an interview with Charles Chutabala, who we all know as horror fans from Ugly Sweater Party, uh, among many other films. How are you doing? I'm great, man. I'm, I'm excited to be on your channel. On your <laughs> channel. Appreciate it, man. It's an honor to have you here. Oh, dude, it, it, it's an honor to be here. And uh, also appropriate, you know, being the Christmas season uh, and, uh, you know, recently having Aaron on talking about Ugly Sweater Party. It's the gift that keeps on giving. You know, please keep on <laughs> unwrapping that present, people. It's a fun movie. <laughs> For sure. No, I'm, I'm happy to be here. I'm alive. I'm safe. My family's well. Um, so that that's all I can ask for right now. Awesome. Yeah, I was. I was twenty twenty been for you overall. Uh, you know, it's kind of wrapping up now, and uh, well, yeah, I was a big yeah. Yeah, it, it is. It is wrapping up for sure. Um, yeah, you know, like 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 so many people, it's been unpredictable. Um, you know, there's been a lot of twists and turns. Uh, a lot of, uh, you know, what's going to happen? You know, because I started twenty twenty. Um, doing a lot of projects and, and started 2020 very, very busy. And just like that, everything, everything got put on hold. Everything was, we'll, we'll just wait and see. Um, and so nobody knew what was going to happen, you know, but all, all we knew was that eventually, you know, we would make art again. Uh, you know, as artists and that like exactly. that, that had to happen, that had to continue. Um, but fortunately for me, right, right as soon as April, uh, March and April hit, I was um, given the opportunity to, uh, to do some Zoom projects or to do some, um, you know, to do some films, some commercials through, you know, social distant technologies such as Zoom. Uh, and so I've been pretty busy um, since then, actually. It wasn't until the, probably the summer that I actually got to be on an actual set again. And that was really exciting. Um, you know, obviously taking precautions now, yeah. you know, with, with COVID, with, uh, uh, you know, all the things that you need to do. And, and each production, you know, evolving and getting, getting more tight more secure, the more we learn. Um, so it's literally been a year of, of watching this evolution happen. Um, not just in my, in my own, uh, artistic world, um, to see those changes, but also just personally, uh, you know, what am I going to do, you know, during this time, what do I want to learn? What are my new hobbies right now? Um, and, uh, it, it's given me a lot of time to think about, uh, creating even more and the things that I want to do in 2021 and also uh, just you know being resourceful using the resources that you have make something because here's the thing is like like art cannot die it's like literally the thing that feeds our soul so yeah, like sure. the world can change we can face some challenges but we can't give up that art that was already fueling us before the world you know had changed um you got, you got to keep that dream alive somehow. How you do it, there is no map for that as we figured out. Like there is, I wish somebody could say, this is how it's, how you got to do it now. But that's also not the just a three thing. step thing. What was that? It's not just a three step thing. Oh God, no, dude, <laughs> God, no. And, and how boring would that be? <laughs> yeah, of course, yeah. You got to discover it for yourself. Yeah, yeah but you were talking about about hobbies. So, um, did you did you get any new hobbies uh, during this year? Uh yeah. Well, you know, you, I, I found um, God, what did I? Oh, well, I visited a a drive-in. Um, not a drive-in. I'm sorry. I've been going to the drive-in a lot more. I'm very fortunate living in California, and actually, the city that I live in, there's a drive-in theater right around the corner from me. So uh, that's, I have that's been nice. Able, oh my God, and like. How cool is that for, see, again, that's one of the amazing things about right now is that drive-in theaters have been given a chance to come back in yeah. force. Like in force. Like this is the reason why we have a box office now to be able to hit box office numbers or 
you know, they've kind of altered now, but if it wasn't for the drive-in theaters and, and to give people an opportunity to experience that again, um, it's, it's just so cool. I saw a freaky, you know, at the oh, drive-in yeah, theater. Oh yeah, I've heard of that one. Yeah, that was, oh God, that was, that was a lot of fun. Saw um, The Relic, you know, which came out over, over the summer as well at the drive-in theater. Uh, so, you know, that's, that's been fun. And then I went through a, a drive-in haunt uh, so there was a uh, some uh, out in in uh, in Orange County. They were doing a drive and hop. You literally just drive your car through, and they try and set up these scenarios or mazes, or they're not really mazes, but they're it's kind of like a show. So I've got into finding um, just kind of researching what's out there, what's for what's for entertainment that I could do in my car, or that's even honestly what's open. Right. <laughs> it's literally what is open where, where can i uh where can i go find some some form of entertainment but it's been exciting to re-experience the drive in you know better than ever right now um honestly it, it it's it's it, yeah you know, it's it's cinema it's how cinema should be seen to be honest it's fun really fun yeah, for me here in Holland, we don't have drive-ins, but that's one thing I would love to do someday, just to go to a drive-in uh, drive show. It's one of those things you just see, especially in horror movies, you know, like um, Blood Rage or in The Blob, you would see like um, oh, yeah. drive-ins, you know, it's it's such an iconic image, basically. Yeah, yeah. And I, I just introduced my 10-year-old nephew to uh, Christine on over Thanksgiving because <laughs> he <laughs> likes horror movies, you know, and, and, as well as, as his uncle Charles. And I introduced him to, to the Christine and you know, he sat through the entire movie and in the movie, there's a, there's a drive-in scene, you know, it, while they're sitting in the Christine. So, <laughs> so meta. <laughs> yeah, for sure. For sure. <laughs> um, and do you um, have any new projects coming up? Yes, I do. Um, I just wrapped a film that I co-produced uh, with a really good friend of mine um, who we worked together on a few films um, in the past uh, that are out now, such as uh, a, a horror anthology called Lilith. Um, and right now, recently, Paranormal Attraction, which is out on iTunes. He, he actually wrote the movie and edited Paranormal Attraction, which is a, a, uh, a succubus film. I believe it's a succubus uh, or an incubus. I know there's a difference. Oh, my God. Somebody out there. Somebody <laughs> out there is going to be like, you know, like, get it right, damn it. Uh, yeah, that, but that's, that's a, I, a random yeah, thing. I up. What was that? Well, like with one interview, me and the interview, we couldn't come up with a song. And like five months later, I still got a comment like, it's this song, you idiots. And I'm like, it, now it's a little late. Now we know what song it is. <laughs> no, no. They, and, they're not, and they're not supposed to let it go. Like, again, <laughs> that is their job, Roger. That is true, <laughs> true, very true. <laughs> God, it is. I mean, being a troll is a full time job. I mean, you got to give him credit. <laughs> but, <laughs> but you know, you're doing something right, Roger. Exactly. I mean, when you've got trolls. Um, yeah. So, so I, I, I started a film last year, this week, um, with with Richard Aguirre. Shout out to Richard Aguirre, and we wanted to join forces and develop a. Uh, a film, an experimental project together, you know, that really had a basic skeleton, but that we could just get very Lynchian with it. We can get Giallo with it. We can get very um, artsy and experimental and tell a story um, about a, a guy uh, who was abused in high school and now he's an adult, but the film follows his tortured mind um, told in a very psychological, horrifying way. And we started the film last year at, th during this week and then COVID hit uh, and the film had so many delays uh, to the point where we would literally, we'd come back and shoot some of it in May and then we'd shut down for another couple of months and then we'd come back in August and then we'd shut down for a couple of months. I have, I, I'm excited to announce that we just wrapped principal photography like two days ago. So that Good. is, <laughs> and we can't wait to share our art with the world. 
so I'm really excited about that film. Uh, there's, it's actually untitled. So I don't have a title for you, um, but that should be we'll that's see. in production now. Yeah. We'll see for sure. Um, and then my next question is going back to one of your earlier movies. Um, what was it like playing in Ugly Sweater Party? Oh, my God. Ugly Sweater Party was so much fun. Um, it was as fun to make as it, probably more fun to make than it was to watch. I know people, if anybody has fun watching that movie, it's because everybody on the cast had, had a great time making it. The first scene that we filmed was, um, was the dream sequence where my character Cliff is doing some type of strip dance <laughs> in the beginning of the film. Uh, with with my co-star Tiffany Brookfest because he he dream dances like his whole fantasy is like he dances and, <laughs> and he's like stripping and that was the very first scene that we ever shot uh, <laughs> the music that they were playing in the background was some like wow chicka wow it was it was some uh, I think it's the it, it is the music that's in the in in the film and we are just like you know what if this is the first shot of the film like the rest of the film, like if this is how it's going to be, oh my God, this is going to be so much fun. And it just got crazier and crazier and crazier. I mean, yes, there was a script. Um, yes, uh, ev almost everything in the script is in the movie, but Aaron Mento, is, and, and you interviewed him, the way that his mind works is he will take his scene and be like, okay, how can I make this crazier? Like, <laughs> as if, like we just didn't have the most toilet humor, the most <laughs> gore, the most, uh, you know, supernatural time travel. Like, like what else, what else is there, Aaron? Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> let's, let's just go balls to the wall. And I, 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 literally balls to the wall. <laughs> yeah literally <laughs> right <laughs> so uh yeah. location at like eight thousand, literally on location at a at like an abandoned campground in the mountains uh like you know exposed to the elements i mean <laughs> it was amazing it was amazing awesome um and what would you say i mean you you know uh mentioned your um your first stripping scene. What was your favorite scene to film out of all of uh, all of your scenes? Dude, that's a hard question. Um, that's a hard question. You know, filming with Felissa Rose um, was so much fun. Uh, and I think that was what Aaron's favorite scene was that he mentioned. Yeah, was, correct. <laughs> again, 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 my character dancing, you know, sexy dancing, kind of stripping and she's trying to get the ugly sweater the possessed ugly sweater off of me um and i mean that was that was a lot of fun uh you know filming with the with the twins um which is crazy because i don't have a lot of scenes with them and cliff uh he's he's alone a lot of the movie he's one of the heroes of the film and he he actually wears the ugly sweater, but he gets separated from everyone very early on before like the first act of the film, which is crazy. Right. But, um, sure. but he does, you know, I have a very, very cool scene uh, where I am fully, fully transformed into sweater face. And I get to interact with the twins uh, played by Tiffany Brookfest and Emily Dom. And they're just, they're crazy. They're, they're so funny to work with. And I think any, any time I got to work with Tiffany Brookfest and Emily Dom, I, I, I couldn't like stop laughing because they act like they're real sisters. They act like Tweedledee and Tweedledum from Alice in Wonderland. Their chemistry is just like, no, you Samantha. No, yeah. you. <laughs> For sure. And it is, oh my God, dude. Like it is like how it sounds. I'm like, whoa, like, are you related? And it's so, no, they're not related. I think this is the first time they've ever worked together. And fun fact, Tiffany Brookfest, who plays Susan, she is a real twin in real life. So I think she probably drew inspiration from that. But those were those were a lot of fun scenes uh, to make. And I'm and I'm glad that the film is out there and it's finding a new audience every year. Oh yeah, for sure. I saw it for the first time this year. 
course, I, as I heard about it, I've, I saw like posters on in the community and stuff. But uh, and I and I just love the poster. But it, then it was um, then 2020 started in January, and I was like, it would be wrong to watch a Christmas movie in January, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah you know and, and it can be it can be watched any time of year you know yeah, what i mean i, really, I, I now I realize really that, that. <laughs> you can just replay it and you're just like dude the movie <laughs> just it's so bonkers and bananas and i love For it sure. and um and i'm glad people are enjoying it so uh my next question is uh what are some actors that you would love to work with Ooh, ooh. Oh God, that's a, that's a really good question. <laughs> Reach for the sky. I know. Okay. Okay. Um, off the top of my head, probably, oh my, well, Kathy Bates, Kathy Bates. So I'm a huge fan of Misery. That was the film that probably introduced me to the horror genre when I was really young. Um, I didn't realize that I was watching a horror movie. I just realized that I was watching something that I couldn't unsee and I wanted to watch over and over again. And, and she's an Academy Award winning actress, um, uh, super talented, but also, you know, also the horror genre has been so overlooked a lot, like in award season. It's not oh, necessarily, yeah. the, you know, the genre sure. that, wins awards and and for kathy bates to win an academy award you know for her portrayal in misery is just um it just it's just it's just epic um yeah she is someone for sure that i'd like to work with one day um well make sure you yeah. you wear extra extra protected you know boots or something so uh <laughs> <laughs> oh my god dude dude it's almost worse to if, if if your foot cracks in boots. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> like sometimes not seeing it or like, but having to imagine that the bones are cracking oh, underneath yeah. those boots <laughs> is almost worse than seeing it. You know yeah, what I mean? That's, like that's, sometimes in horror movies they use that to their advantage and and not show something, so you're kind of imagining it in your head, you know, and then then it's almost almost more scary than if you would see what, what the director's vision would be. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Sound. I mean, again, and, and, and like so much respect for sound mixers. Oh my God. And, and just the sound team. I mean, I know for not just ugly sweater party, but every film that I've worked on, it's like there, there's no sound. If the sound sucks, your movie sucks. There's no, <laughs> You know what I mean? Like, I yeah. mean, it takes a team. It takes a team. Everyone, the from the DP to uh, you know to the gaffers to the talent to everybody on there. But man, like, you cannot sacrifice sound. Like, you you need it. Like, so respect. Right now, I honor you, sound people. <laughs> Good. Yeah. For I, I think. Um... Sound is, I mean, it's it's a cliche at this point to say it, but sound is definitely more important than uh, than imagery. <laughs> I would say so, absolutely. I, you know, and it's I've been at film festivals where, oh my god, and you know, shout out to film festivals that we get to come back to doing that again, um, in in person, you know, in person, <laughs> not but, not through computer screens <laughs> not through computer screens i mean in, in, in you know in the online space digital premieres digital screenings you know it's an opportunity for your film to be seen but there's just nothing like being there meeting the cast but yeah when sound drops out even in those film festivals and it's not even your film you just cringe and you feel so bad for the filmmaker or you just feel like oh my god i feel so bad for you right now because <laughs> like you know what i mean if there's like I don't know, something in the shot that you can't overlook. Maybe you can look past it, right? Yeah. Like, oh, there's still blood on her shirt. I thought she's supposed to be clean now. It's okay. We'll just erase that from the mind. But you cannot over, you can't unhear <laughs> that the sound just dropped, that it was, you know, you just can't look past it. You're just like, oh, God. It just takes you out of the entire experience. For sure. Yeah. Yeah, good sound is, is, is probably the most important part. You know, like sometimes if you if you just close your eyes during a scene, um, 
you can still hear what's going on but if you uh close your ears it's kind of like the tension is completely gone um well that's for like an action scene or something or a horror scene um just the emotion is gone oh yeah 100 percent 100 percent and my next question is uh you already mentioned misery and and christine uh what are some of your favorite horror movies oh god black christmas 1974 go on um not not even just a good you know christmas horror movie but just a great horror movie in general like i recommend anyone who just is like what movie do you remember i i want to watch horror movies but like what would you recommend that i start on black christmas it's just it's it is so good and it holds up to this day um i believe it's the first slasher like the first um the first uh you know killer calls on the phone yeah where is the killer it is the first time that I know of that it's been done to this level, everything else that comes after that, you know, has taken a page from black Christmas. And speaking of sound, the, the billowing howling snowstorm that is literally the soundtrack of the film throughout the whole movie. I mean, I mean, the characters cannot even be talking and you're still hearing that extra character in the movie, which is this billowing snowstorm because the stakes are so high in that film. It's, no one is safe. All bets are off. And it creates that tension from the very, very beginning. And also, also the acting. It's like, you know, good acting. Good acting in a horror movie. Um, it can be rare. <laughs> it's everyone. And it's everyone. It's all these stars, you know, and it's also female, female leads. And you're just like, they're just giving they're bearing their soul it is it is is remarkable black christmas 1974 i also have on my top 10 um list uh which is the house of the devil um directed by ty west 2010 it's a wonderful uh wonderful film uh kind of a throwback to the 70s um uh kind of satanic panic genre of horror uh huge fan of of pan's labyrinth which I consider a horror film. It's not a kid's film. That it's not a kid's film. <laughs> it stars a child actor, but it is a horror movie. Um, and uh, yeah. Oh, and The Descent. The Descent. Uh, a, a group of girls who explore the caves underground. Um, that, that's, a, that's, that's eerie, eerie film because that could literally happen. We don't know what's underneath the caves. That film haunted me so bad like we the caves are so unexplored so we don't know if there are humanoid evolved things down there and not only that people die in caves all the time because of tunnel vision right they they uh they lose their way like i mean they literally everything starts to look the same and so they can't find their way out and that's why they die in caves that's freaky that is so freaky really scary yeah <laughs> yeah that's um that's that's like one of my fears i guess uh um like was it what is it called like small spaces and stuff but especially caves like sometimes you'll you'll see like these traveling vlogs and all all of a the sudden they're like diving through caves and i'm like so you're already in a small area but then you also have to hold your breath so th- yeah that's just not for me <laughs> <laughs> yeah um claustrophobia yeah exactly claustrophobia there you go yeah that's 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 one of my fears <laughs> um and what if what are some of your um this is more of a, a music related question what are some of your favorite musicians um i'm a fan of the dixie chicks well oh, oh wait they, they named their they renamed themselves the chicks now um you know, <laughs> just to get more of, mainstream or well, no, the, so, so the Dixie Chicks, um, I guess the name Dixie kind of implies, um, I, I, and I know I'm going to get this wrong, but there are ties to slavery in the South. And over the summer, there were a few bands that have actually, uh, a few country 
uh, country musicians who changed their name um, to fit the current times that we're living in um, from the Black Lives Matter movement, George All Floyd. Right. Um, and they actually released a new album over the summer under the, the label, The Chicks, which is, which is so underrated. I mean, and, and, it, and it is so good. Um, I'm also a huge fan of Fiona Apple. Um, been a fan of her since, gosh, since, since she first started. Um, I'm a fan. I, I like everything from, from pop music to rock to Marilyn Manson <laughs> to, uh, you know, EDM music. Uh, but right now, I would say, what do I have in rotation right now? Oh yeah, it's a <laughs> yeah. Right now on 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 repeat, it's got to be um, it's got to be Fiona Apple. Yeah, she's on my. She literally, I was listening to her while I was getting ready, <laughs> talking about her tortured like high school, middle school, <laughs> middle school bully. <laughs> I was listening to oh wow, <laughs> talk about being bullied as a middle schooler over and over. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's funny. <laughs> And uh, <laughs> then you have the next question, which I also asked uh, Aaron. Um, if you could rid the world of one thing, what would it be? Oh, cancel culture. That's a no brainer. Cancel culture. Um, you know what? It, yeah. Or let me let me expand on that. <laughs> <laughs> People. Okay, just the the culture of that we have to be mad at something, like, like to uh, to be mad about something, like uh, to be offended by something, and and uh, I just man, and I know I maybe I'll get a lot of hate for this. See, exactly, I don't care, I don't care, but I miss comedians, dude. I miss comedians who just got to be funny and not care you know about who they're offending because they were offending everybody like everybody exactly. and we yeah. got to laugh at ourselves and everyone you know what i mean like like don't act like you don't do that or don't act like that's not you you know what i mean or don't act like you know like and and i wish that we can get back to just laughing again um at everything you know a little bit of being a politically incorrect um and right now that's really unpopular because Right now, it's like no, <laughs> be exactly, political. Yeah. People be should take themselves. Um, people should take themselves less serious. Yes, yes. I think do we really need that right now. That is the cure. We don't know. Um, you know, one thing that we do know right now is that we don't know what's going to happen. <laughs> there's going to be drama. Like there's going to be drama. Um, there's going to be uh, figuring out how to get the world back to normal we know that there's going to be issues like that's for sure so why not why not just take ourselves a little less seriously right now that is like the gift the present that we can do right now like it is okay like it's okay to laugh people it's okay to laugh it's okay to be like that was fun oh no 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 <laughs> people are like hiding that they thought that that meme was funny no the meme was funny laugh yeah <laughs> Yeah, I think um, I think one YouTuber you would really like. Uh, I really like him too. Uh, Cody Ko. I don't know if you know him. Um, okay. Basically, he always has like uh, he always like makes fun of other YouTubers, but uh, sometimes he, he got like there was one guy, and eventually he got invited. It was like this. Do you know Ty Lopez? He sounds familiar. It was the guy that had the ad going on with like his Porsche and then his library with knowledge, you know? Oh, yeah. <laughs> so Cody Co made a roast about him. And then a few weeks later, he got invited to his house. <laughs> and then you see, like Ty Lopez wasn't like, oh, Cody Co, how dare you make fun of me? No, he invited him to his house and, and like he just, they had this tour going on and Cody was asking him questions and i was asking him question it was just this great thing you know um, That's awesome. he, he embraces it he embraces exactly. it. it it's like literally like hey the people are talking about me negative press is good press you know what for sure and, and what are you gonna do like what are you gonna do be like no that's no i don't you know 
I don't flex. No, you do flex. Like, exactly. what are you gonna do? Like, you're the reason it's funny is because he's calling out exactly what you do. Yeah. So you can either <laughs> you could either act like, nope, I don't see it. No, I don't see it. I don't see, or you could be like, oh, okay. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Make, make something positive out of out of something that could be a negative if oh. you if you don't embrace it exactly um and then where do you hope to see yourself in 10 years oh ooh, jeez man 10 years that's a long time yeah i i mean right now like i'm thinking like short term <laughs> <laughs> i'm like okay where do i want to be three months from now <laughs> yeah that's true <laughs> I, uh, I, I'm really, um, right now, right now I'm celebrating, um, successes. Uh, that's what I'm doing because I didn't really do that in the last, I would say six years of my acting career. Um, I just went from one film to the next film to the next project, not really taking in the journey and, 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 taking time to be like, oh my God, we did all that. Look, look what we've done. So I woke up and I just uh, found out that a film that I produced and star in called Serena Waits just hit 1 million views overnight. Oh yeah, I saw that on your story, man. Congrats for that, by the way. Yeah, thank you, dude. Thank you, man. And, and it's those things that's like, that was a film that we made right after Ugly Sweater Party. In fact, we were on set of Ugly Sweater Party, um, taking a break at night after like a day of, of, of filming. And that's literally we're like, hey, let's 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 shoot a film. Let's shoot it, let's shoot a film in three days. Just me and my you know, a couple of friends. Um, <clears throat> I mean, and we went like a blink of an eye. Literally, we wrapped up this sweater party, we shot Serena Waits, and we went on to the next thing, and we're like, okay, we got three days, let's just hustle, let's just crank it out, went straight into pre-production. And then right after Serena Witts went on to the next thing and to the next thing. And it just all went by so fast. But today that film, which uh, during this pandemic gets released, <laughs> like never in a million years. And that was made four years ago, but somehow during the pandemic, our distributor picks it up, releases it. And then it ends up on watch movies now on YouTube and now has gone viral. And I'm like, okay, I'm going to stop right now and just celebrate all this stuff because I've got, you know, projects that I'm really excited about that are going to be coming out like next year or that I just wrapped this week that I cannot talk about. Um, and, and, but I'm like, I'm celebrating the things that we've done, like the things that we've been able to accomplish right now, because yeah, I don't know what's going to happen in 10 years from now. All I know is that, <clears throat> that I hope that, I hope that a year from now that I'm still loving what I'm doing. That is my goal you know, that I'm still loving it because my, my best advice I would give anybody is like, if you love what you do, keep on doing it. If it's not, if it ain't fun, don't like, if it's not fun, we don't do it. When it stops right. becoming fun, take a moment, be like, why is this not fun anymore? Do I need to change something? Or maybe I got to find a different career or find a new hobby or something else. So I, I, I hope that even a year from now that I'm still having just as much fun as I am. And I know that that if I didn't take the time today to celebrate like, you know, the 1 million views on Serena Waits um, or the fact that Ugly Sweater Party, you know, found its new audience um, <laughs> overseas, overseas, yeah. uh, then I would definitely be sucking the fun out of all of it. So I'm like, okay, this is my, my new recharge right now is, is to, to, to build that momentum again by, by celebrating um, these successes. And okay, you know what? To answer your question, I hope, that in 10 years from now, there is Ugly Sweater Party 2, 3, 4. <laughs> That's my hope. Oh, I Dude, hope girls. that too. Yeah, I hope that you, too. <laughs> um, so is there anything you would like to add to the interview? Oh my God. Well, dude, uh, first of all, thanks for having me on, man. You're so congratulations. welcome. Yeah, speaking of success, congratulations on your growing YouTube channel. Thank you. For all of the no for real because you are you are an example of of uh putting your mind to not only just what you want to do uh but also combining that with what your passion is and um and also just constantly growing because it's like oh it's like who do you want to interview next like yeah. you've interviewed so many people already roger 
It's like, what are you going to do next? You know, what's 2021 going to be for you? For sure. But, uh, yeah, yeah. It's, it's one of the yeah. craziest things because a year ago, I didn't even know I would be interviewing people now. So it's just this crazy, uh, crazy thing that came out of nowhere, really. <laughs> yeah yeah well and, and you're good at it you're you're, you're good at it so Appreciate continue it. to uh allow whatever your wherever your success takes you to the growth of this channel to your own projects to i'm sure all of the networking that you're doing right now um it's it's, it's insane man so so congratulations for you pros, pros, prosperous 2021 for you um and i just want to thank you for having me on uh you know giving me a platform today uh sharing the love of ugly sweater party with all of your, <laughs> you would almost call it a beautiful sweater party. Oh uh, yes, it is. <laughs> we made all those sweaters in that movie. Uh, we made all those sweaters. And in the beginning of the film, when you see the montage, like in the opening credits, right. People are putting glue. Yeah. We shot all that on an ugly, ugly sweater making party that we all got together with the cast and they shot b-roll <laughs> of us making sweaters and that made it into the film so you are part of our sweater roger for sure <laughs> thank you um and to everybody watching thank you guys so much for watching and uh, we'll see you guys next time see ya you're pissing me off roger it's gonna be wild tonight.